Disclaimer. If you don't understand how Godot signals work via code, you won't understand the concepts in this video. Probably. Okay. So I'm making a fantasy grand strategy game, and I have a problem. I have scouts and colonists. They both use the same map node framework. They attach an agent component to it, and then have their own code that gives the map node instructions on where to move and what to do. Problem is, sometimes there is nothing to do. They haven't been given a job yet, so they go into an idle state. Okay, so I write some code for map nodes to idle, because I don't want to write the same code in both the scout and colonist scripts. I don't want to write it in the agent component, because I know in future other things like armies or resource nodes will be using the same idle framework. Now they can go idle, yay! But how do they stop idling? Well, this seems like a great time to use signals. The scout and the colonist both get their jobs from the country that they belong to, so if I make a scout signal and a colony signal, I can connect to both, and emit those signals when new jobs come in. Great. Except now I have to connect to those signals. I can't connect to them in my scout or colonist script, because they're stored and used as scripts, not nodes, and so can't connect to signals. I'm using them as scripts because I would love this game to scale as much as possible, and I'm trying to minimize node bloat. I can't have my map nodes or agent nodes connect to both signals, because then a scout would wake up when there's colonist jobs to do, and vice versa, and also I'd be violating the principles of composition that Godot really encourages. Okay, what if I put a function in my map node script that connects to each signal? When the map node is created, the scout and the colonist scripts call the specific function to connect to it. This works, and this will also mean that I will have an ever-increasing list of signal connection functions for every type of signal for every use case of my map nodes. Not future-proof. Here's something you might not have realized. You can pass variables into signal connections. If I write a function connect to thing in my map node script, all I have to do is call this function in my scout and colonist scripts, pass in the right variables, and the signals will be connected. Now this is nice. I can write any new script, have it call this function, and connect any signal anywhere to a function in this node. Great. It's a shame I have to write these two lines of code in every node that I want to connect to signals like this, and if I want to disconnect that signal, I have to write another two lines of code in every node, again. It would be great if there was some way to connect signals in other nodes without ever having to write a custom function. So, you're like me. You've checked the using signals page of the documentation. You've read the signal page. Here's the list of methods. So, uh, why does it look different to this image I've been showing you this whole time? Well, my friend, let me bring your attention to the object page of the documentation. You know, objects. The base class for all other classes in the engine. And this page has a completely different explanation of how signals work and how to use them. Far more extensive in the different ways you can use them. And if I scroll down to here, would you look at that? A description of every possible way we could connect signals together. They all start with the signaling node, then the signal that you're connecting to, then the function that you want to... Wait a minute. Callable, open brackets, self. So if I just write callable, open brackets, map node, wake node, then I can...
So, there you have it. A uh, function for connecting any node to another signal and calling any function in response. At this point, it's a question of how you'd rather do things. I've been working on this game and learning to code for just over a year now, and I've had to do a lot of learning about how to build a flexible system that can scale easily to larger sizes and to larger complexity. I actually don't think that any one method is specifically superior, not the first one, that one's definitely worse. Perhaps you could keep the in-between function from solution 2 and a comment, just explaining why it's there so that you'll understand it if you have future problems. Or you do what I did and just comment next to the wake node function with the same explanation. I mean, hell, I don't even know if this is a good comment that I'll understand if I come back to this three months from now. I hope you learned something from this video. I'm planning on sharing more on how I've built this project in the future, but honestly, I don't have a great frame of reference for what people want to see. So if you have any questions on how I've done some of this, or if you know better ways of doing, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> please. I, God, oh God, please. I, I would love, I'd love tips on, on how to improve. All right, peace.